What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 128 and we start today's episode off by seeing we've got some tournament prize money after we lost for the first time this season against Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey quarterfinal second leg and of course due to losing that game we are now out of that competition so you know this season we could have been you know possibly going for a treble maybe a bit too ambitious this season but you never know even so we won't be getting that because we are out of the Copa del Rey so that's a bit of a shame but we were going to lose eventually it's just a shame to know we lost due to a last minute penalty but uh, there you go well we we're going to lose the game but we're out of the competition due to that last minute penalty but uh, there you go uh, still as you can see it's time for transfer deadline day here in club and country as well time for transfer deadline day and as you guys know there's only one player I'm interested in it's this guy uh, yeah, I've just got to stop now, don't I? It's this guy, uh, Jose Guy, that I really want to get hold of, but Valencia just rejected my final bid, and that's a real shame because, you know, he is a left back. He's in my Spain squad. He's 80 overall, 24 years old. As I mentioned before, he's a really decent prospect. I feel as though I could get into like 82, 83, possibly 84 before he maxes out. He'd be a great understudy to Grimaldo, and, you know, to, to rotate those two as left backs would be really good. Both of those could be the future of Spain in the left back position, so. It would have been a great signing for us, but sadly not. We'll have to wait and see. You know, maybe we'll have a go, another, another go at trying to sign him next year, and maybe we'll be able to pull off the signing. You never know. But uh, still, following out as we still have some money left over, I decided to put in bids for this guy, Raul Sosa Pena, and also Freyl Martin. Both of these guys are new gens or regens. Look really, really decent. Sosa Pena is 78 overall. Uh, Freyl Martin is 77. Freyl Martin is 20. Sosa Pena is 22. And uh, we'd love to get either of those guys on our side, but we'll have to wait and see what those clubs say. We also put in a new bid for Jose Guy just because why not basically but of course they came back to us and said no further talks no real surprise they were never going to accept that bid it was just a desperation one really and uh, there you go so that uh, is officially done now we will not be able to get hold of Jose Guy at least not in this transfer window uh, Villarreal and Tenerife came back to us regarding Raul Sosa Pena and also Freyl Martin Tenerife wants 16 million pounds to the attacking midfielder who's got the exciting prospect tag Sosa Pena though uh, also has the exciting prospect tag it's not showing right now because his contract's up at the end of the year but he was also uh, also shown as an exciting prospects. He's 78 overall, so one rating higher than uh, Freyl Martin, but also two years older. Either of these players will be totally fine for me. Uh, Villarreal wants £16.5 million for Sosa Pena. Tenerife wants £16 million for Freyl Martin. Put in new bids for both of them at £11 million and we'll wait and see what they say. And uh, we also had a transfer for Borja Lopez. Uh, the French side, Leon want to take our tall centre-back, but we say give us £20 million pounds or don't bother. Cause, uh, sorry, £25 million pounds even, or don't bother. Because Borja Lopez, although he doesn't grow, is always in good form. He's always happy. He's always a solid, consistent defender for us. So, you know, there's no need to sell him at the end of the day. Like, seriously, even if he won't grow, he's still a really solid player for us. And as I've said many times before, although the overall is important, what what's more important is how you feel when you're controlling your players, you know. And I feel really confident with Borja Lopez. Lopez at the back. Uh, still, uh, Villarreal accepted our bid for Sosa Pena. Uh, Tenerife rejected uh, ours for Freyl Martin. And Malaga then put in a bid of £16.5 million for their attacking midfielder. So we're not going to get hold of him. Instead, we're going to go for Sosa Pena instead. £11 million is a little bit expensive for a 78 overall at 22 years old, but he does have a decent future. That is, I know, over his double, uh, over double his valuation, but I still think that could be a good signing for us if he does, uh, if he does end up developing. Uh, still, Chelsea wants to take Roya Haran on a season-long loan, so we said no to that. I don't see the point in doing that. And also, Real Madrid came into us regarding young Halalise and said well, they'll give us £9.5 million for the guy. And I was like, you could offer me £95 million and I would still probably reject it. I mean, I probably wouldn't, but I'd still be considering it regardless uh, because it's, it's you know, £9.5 million for Elise will be a healthy, pro uh, healthy profit on the guy. Yes, but he's our best academy prospect. He's got the, uh, has potential to be special tag. He's already a monster right now, 79 overall, only 18 years old, great holding midfielder, having a wonderful season. There is no need to sell him. And also, Sosa Painter accepted his contract, so he comes in for £11 million. Four-star skills, two-star weak foot, uh, medium high work rates, were they? Or low medium? Can't remember now. But looks like a really decent player regardless. He'll probably just be a squad player for the rest of the series, really. But he looks like a really decent player for us, and I'm happy he's come in. I thought that was going to end all the transfer business, but we were able to pull off one thing with a couple of hours to go. We've signed another player to a pre-contract, and that is Bolde Diao Keita. Now, this guy's a left winger who plays for Lazio, 24 years old. He's 79 overall. I can check his overall as I'm Spain manager, even though we don't have a scout report on the guy. 79 overall, and you may remember him if you watch my career mode series. He was at PSG when we arrived there, and he was really, really good for us. So I'm pretty happy we've got him on a pre-contract. He'll come in next season. 
and uh, just like Sosa Pena, he'll probably be a squad player for us, but even so, he's handy to have on a free transfer, you're not going to say no, and I'm pretty pleased we were able to do that right before the transfer window did end, and then deadline day did end, and to be honest, you know, to recap the deadline day and to recap the January transfer window in total, we did pretty well, I think, you know, I was disappointed to miss out on my main transfer target in Jose Gaia, but we did sign Paco Alcacer on a pre-contract, what a steal that is, we signed Cater on a pre-contract as well, decent squad player for us, and to get hold of Sosa Pena, a decent young midfielder at 22 years old, yeah, you know, for £11 million isn't too much of an overspend, it's a little bit, but not too much of an overspend, I think we did okay, I mean, you know, again, maybe we could have done a little bit better business, maybe had I saved my money a little bit more, we might have possibly been able to get hold of uh, Gaia, if I did a couple of decent, uh, a couple of other transfer sort of negotiations, for example, we could have sold uh, Borja Lopez and uh, maybe cashed in on him, got ourselves... Um got ourselves Jose Gaia, played around the team a little bit, maybe uh, dropped Elise back to play centre-back and then put, you know, put someone else in midfield. We could have possibly got Jose Gaia, but to be honest, I'm fine missing out on him in this transfer window to do the business we did. Paco Alcacer and Cater are two brilliant signings on pre-contract, the main one of course being Alcacer, and of course Sosa Pena, as you saw his stats there, as a squad player for a midfielder, tied down to a five-year deal on just 35 grand a week, 22 years old, only going to get better, I'm fine with that. So that ends transfer window, I'm happy with what we did. As for the league table, look at this 16 games to go with top of the table with uh, 62 points 15 points clear of Sevilla and we've got a better head-to-head -head record over them right now it's going to take some serious catching up from them right now we're also I think it's um I think it's about 19 points clear of Barcelona something like that in third place it's probably going to be a two-horse race this year and right now I mean as I mentioned in the last episode I don't want to say that the league title is ours and we've got one hand on the trophy and are going to be completely arrogant about it but it's it's ours to lose and it's ours to lose catastrophically as well because we are so far in front right now. We are undefeated. We've won 20 games out of a possible 22. It's hard to see who is going to be able to catch us. Regardless, we take on Celta Vigo for the first and only game of today's episode here as we travel to the league's bottom place side. Celta Vigo are rock bottom, 20th place right now. We are, of course, top of the table as well. So coming to this game, you would expect it's only going to go one way. And the first chance would fall to us as well in the seventh minute as Danny Carvajal picks up the ball for us and fake shots around his man. Keeps hold of the ball and shoots from range but it's a good save by Yole and put behind for a corner. So first chance coming to us but a good stop by the Celta Vigo uh, goalkeeper and turn behind for a corner. And from the corner it's crossed in by Hesse Rodriguez into the centre. Looks for Borja Lopez who could have left on deadline day but didn't and he almost marked his uh, loyalty with us with a goal there. Sadly not goes just over the bar and it's still 0-0. In the 13th minute though Celta Vigo almost got a shock opening goal of the game. This header by Bar goes over the bar though and behind for a goal kick. Yes I was waiting for that opportunity and it's still 0-0. And in the 15th minute, Morata goes down the left-hand side here, cuts past his man with a quick little ball roll, finds Isco, Isco finds Tessa Rodriguez, great chance to make it 1-0, but Yol makes another good save and turns it behind for a corner, so still goalless in this game, but in the 31st minute here, we won ourselves a free kick and Hesse Rodriguez was standing over it. You guys know that Rodriguez is really, really good from free kicks. It's been quite a few games since he's last scored one though, so I was thinking about giving it to someone like Isco instead, but obviously Rodriguez is our main free kick taker and penalty kick taker as well, and you know he can score the free kicks, and it's a wonderful strike as well. Brilliant goal by Hesse Rodriguez. Um you know, today on the 23rd of May, I put up the episode where I asked you guys to vote between hashtag Team Rodriguez and hashtag Team Morata to see who you think is going to score more goals this season. It was a really, really mixed response, but a lot of you said that Rodriguez will probably win Golden Boot this year, and the reasoning was because he takes free kicks and penalties, and that's a solid argument as well, because when you think about the amount of goals he scored through penalties and free kicks this year, that's probably what's got him ahead of Morata right now in the race for the Golden Boot. And it's a wonderful free kick by Hesse Rodriguez. He's having his best season in a Racing Santander jersey. A couple of years ago in his debut season, he was our best player. Then last season, he was a little bit inconsistent. This season, though, he has just come alive. He's been absolutely fantastic. Down the right-hand side for us in the midfield. A really awesome player. A lovely free kick there. It's now his 19th goal in La Liga. He's four ahead of Morata right now in La Liga Golden Boot race. And it's Celta Vigo nil, Racing Santander 1 as we take the lead for a wonderful free kick. In the 38th minute, Morata wants to get himself back in the Golden Boot race, though, as he goes through with a fake shot and shoots but again Yol makes a really good save so he may have picked the ball out of the back of his own net already in this first half it was still playing pretty well and he was keeping Celta Vigo in the game single-handedly really and from the corner Rodriguez crosses the ball in looks for Robbie Yang he flicks it back to Elise and his shot goes harmlessly wide and over and behind for a goal kick so still Celta Vigo nil Racing won going into the break but to be honest other than the one chance Celta Vigo had had in the first half it was all Racing Santander as you would expect and as Morata finds Elise here he fakes just around the last defender and he couldn't score in the first 
first half, but he does score here. Really nice finish by Elise. He also could have been leaving on deadline day to Real Madrid, but of course we said no, we're never going to sell this guy. He's one of our best academy prospects, is our best academy prospect, and he makes it Celta Vigo nil, harassing Santander too. And he's trying to do a few goals this season as well, Elise. He is a holding midfielder, that's his uh, position. He's, his job is to lock down the defence, but he's still a really decent player when going forward as well. That's now his fourth goal in La Liga, and he makes it Celta Vigo nil, Rassing 2. And the final chance would fall in the 74th minute. Celta Vigo had a good chance here, but Nelito puts his shot wide. And it was how the game would finish as well. So another win notched up for Racing Santander. That's now 21 wins out of 23 La Liga games. This title is ours to lose. Another solid performance sees us notch up another three points. And it's going to take some serious catching from Sevilla or Barcelona if we're going to lose, uh, lose our lead at the top of the table. But that does it in the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.